For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. Right? So, here we see then that the power of the atonement is not limited but the application of the atonement is limited. We go back to the same. God chooses from a group, in this case, the whole of humanity. God chooses from a group of rebellious creatures who hates Him. And out of that lot, He picks those upon whom He will place the atonement of his beloved son and chooses them in spite of who they are as the object of his unfailing steadfast covenantal love. To finish, I want to say this. Armenian theology also has the power of the atonement limited. In reality, they do have the power of the atonement limited. What do I mean by that is this. Armenian theology, Christ's atonement, that is the power, is not efficacious enough to say all because it's limited by men's will. So they are the ones who have a limited power in the atonement. Because they have Christ dying for all. But the Holy Spirit cannot pull it off. Because it's restrained it is frustrated, it is hindered by the will of the creature who says no to the gospel. So do we understand that? So if we are to be consistent with the overarching principles in scripture, that is the divine purpose, and the divine prerogative, and the testimony of Christ, the testimony of scripture, which is the same, then we must understand that the Armenian theology is very, very, very inconsistent. Because if Jesus Christ died to save the whole world, and if the Father wishes the whole world to be saved and yet the whole world does not accept Christ that means that God is not consistent with his word and that God we cannot trust because that means that you have no security Listen very carefully. That means you have no security because you can will yourself out of grace 